population of a little over 200 million. Um, so those are some of the figures within Africa, some of the top uh, headlines within Africa. Um, so South Africans cheer as alcohol goes back on sale. Mm -hmm. You know, during yeah, their lockdown, the <laughs> yeah, during their lockdown, alcohol was also banned yeah, because yeah. we are told that alcohol-related violence is quite high in South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So the police needed to be focused yeah. during the period so that they won't have to waste time going to deal with there issues um, alcohol-related related related so violence. Alcohol was banned, and it was a big issue because uh, they also produced a lot of wine industries yeah, out there. So it was yeah. a big hit for the economy and people. So today, people were out in their numbers and in the queue getting some alcohol and it, it was quite a, spe a spectacle to watch. Yeah. South Africa also delayed schools reopening by a week more. Okay. I mean, you know, Ramaphosa, when he announced the easing of restrictions, schools, some schools were supposed to reopen. Mm -hmm. But obviously, from the way things are going, they are being a, a bit cautious. So, so is it from the science holding, and data? Yeah, that's why yeah, we're seeing yeah, the So they are holding delay, back a bit okay. for a week more to see how okay. things go. Across you, board, right? Across board, yeah. Okay. Ugandan MPs arrested over coronavirus border protests. Two Ugandan MPs have been arrested after leading a demonstration calling for the closure of the border with South Sudan in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Okay. And most Malawians more scared of hunger than COVID-19. Mm. A recently conducted poll has shown that 81% of Malawians are not afraid of the coronavirus and are more concerned about hunger. Interesting. And so also Rwanda reverses easing of coronavirus lockdown. Rwanda has reversed its planned easing of COVID-19 restrictions on In Tanzania, older students are to return to class. Um, some college students in Tan Tanzania are heading back to high schools and colleges for the first time in about two months, but would have to follow strict guidelines to ensure their safety from COVID-19. And Kenyan leader disturbed by rising COVID-19 cases. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has expressed concern over the number of rising Okay, so those are some of the headlines around Africa. Okay, so I think with that, uh, we can come to... start with the numbers. So I'll quickly read through what he said with regards to our cases um, in terms of death, in terms of the numbers, in terms of testing and all that. Then we'll look at the figures we have. So um, quoting from his speech, he said, uh, hospital Hospitalization and death rates have been persistently very low, some of the lowest in Africa, he says, and in the world. Now, he says the Ghanaian people are not dying of the virus in the hundreds and thousands that were earlier anticipated, and that um, what we are seeing on a daily basis in some other countries. So, um, as of Sunday, 31st May, um, under the measures that we've seen over the period, um, this is what we have. So, for the test we've done 2118 425 tests for the positive cases we've recorded we have 8070 uh, for the number of recoveries we've recorded as a country we have 2947 the death standard 36 uh, 13 persons are currently severely ill and um, three are critically ill for which one we're told is on a ventilator and then um, 5087 people are receiving treatment at home um, isolation centers and hospitals so guys this is our situation with testing with um, the cases with recoveries with critically ill um, and all that Mm. Let's start with you, Salom. Yes, uh, very interesting. Um, of course, yesterday, uh, a lot of people anticipated that, that the president was going to begin uh, measures to ease the restrictions. Uh, so, yes, it, it happened. And the other concern, too, is that the numbers appear to be, to st to be going up, even though maybe the, you may argue that the, the rate of infection in terms of daily numbers have slowed mm. but for many the the cumulative numbers uh, speak volumes and the fact that the recovery rates are not as high as you you would expect even though at some point in the journey we saw the huge numbers recovering we are hoping that a lot more people are you know uh, online waiting to to recover uh, having said that you know it is a balancing act you, you can't be under restrictions forever. You have to balance the social, the economic, the security.
across various facets of society. economics of it the economy is, is is slowing or has slowed down over the last 11 weeks or, or, or three months owing to COVID-19 and you will want to as much as possible want to do things to to, to restart the growth or to accelerate the growth as, as it were because I think the economy was 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 in a, a better place concern I mean compared to today yeah but what do you and, say to people who say yes the economy is suffering some amount of um, you know hit based on slowing down some activities that will you know not look good if we still run them but in lifting the partial uh, uh, restriction you have churches who don't pay taxes but you have the likes of um, cinemas drinking sports bars beaches who um, pay taxes still not open but you have churches and the likes still <laughs> yeah, open yeah it's so it's a balancing act like i said and that's what the president did uh, so you need to balance the various stakeholders so for example we are a country of about 70 percent christians yeah the, the the church community or the religious mosques are also open so so the, the religious community is very powerful people even believe that the religious community holds the numbers so in doing a thing like this because it's a balancing act against the social and everything you you you, you have to give everybody a bit of it so you give the economy a bit of it the social people want to fellowship people want to go to the mosque people want to go to the church people are even getting depressed because they can't fellowship any longer you have to balance all those things against several other factors which are critically which are also important mm -hmm. so education for example very critical he didn't just open it up for everybody he he had to stagger it so final year classes across the board have to resume so that is sorting them out a bit there churches what did he say or mosque he had to cap it at some point 100 people in a church and i think we'll, we'll get it but mm. that 100 people or he said 100 people or 25 percent so mm. let's say if you're, you have a small church building that can accommodate 90 people or even 100 people you don't say because the cap is 100 so everybody is coming to church no mm. it's a 25 percent or a maximum of 100 so if your church if, if your church is 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 small and so can sit a maximum of 100 people you don't say because of the cap hundred you are going for hundred because that will not help you do social distancing so in that case we go to 20 we go for 25 percent of the total membership and 25 percent of the total membership for churches which are large the churches that sit in the thousands yeah. so if if your church sits about five thousand people you don't say 25 percent of that so you know um, about a thousand people are coming to church so i think it was properly crafted to, to, to cater for the, the, the nuances and the various situations, you know, so, so, so that is it. So every facet of society, I think, has a thing or two to benefit in this particular the economy benefits, the social aspects of things benefits, you know, educational uh, institutions or the education of the nation also benefits because people have had concerns that all our students were home, you know, and, and people even said that they were having psychological issues the people in the final years were, were getting anxious and that wasn't good because they, they felt that they didn't even know what was happening mm. there, there, there's a story um i was reading earlier today on the uh, on the uh, what was it on the sun on the standard uh, 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 website standard news website they have chosen the uk people have chosen the reception year year one and year six as the years to go to school from today Mm -hmm. and, and there are reasons i would and i read experts say children in reception and year one have uh, learned vital social skills and start to build the foundations of reading it is therefore important that they get back to into the classroom as quickly as possible they are also too young to be able to do much independent learning at home look at this those in year six had an abrupt abrupt end of their primary school careers and it will be beneficial for them emotionally to return to school and see their friends before heading off to secondary school in September. Primary teachers will also be able to do vital work preparing them for the move to secondary school. This is purely social and, and this is purely mental as well, you mm -hmm. know. So, so people being at home for all that period had an effect on mental health. It's, it's only sad that in our country we've not 
uh, uh, taking mental health seriously. So sometimes we are seeing symptoms we 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 don't adapt, we don't see them. But I think the president did the right thing by staggering the, the the restrictions or the easing of the restrictions the way he has done. Every facet of society has a thing or two to benefit from it. Everybody is taking a hit, but in this case, everybody is benefiting. Or every uh, sector of the economy or uh, of the country is having to okay. benefit a bit from from from, from okay. this particular okay. restrictions. So being we'll go into details um, all these um, um, restrictions that we're seeing that are affected. Um, but let me also take your um, general opening remarks, even then we can look at the president's speech on the various issues and then take them one by one. Yeah, I, I think that we, prior to this address, we had, we had all anticipated that there was going to be an easing. Um, it, was, it was obvious from the consultations government itself had with various stakeholders on what to do. And it is not peculiar to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every country is measuring a situation and deciding to ease because the disease is here, it's not going now and life must go on, the economy must move, things must move. And so I, I was definitely expecting this. And I was actually... Are you expecting a partial... I was, I, was, I, was, I was expecting, because on this platform, we are spoken and we have said that, for instance, if schools were going to reopen, we expected final year students to, to be allowed to go to school. Mm -hmm. I made that comment. Yeah, so when I heard that, I, I thought that no it was surprised. a perfect idea. Religion? Were you expecting um, for the churches? For the churches, case? I was confused because I was wondering what the president was going to do, because it was obviously not going to be a wholesale, wholesale opening for church and mosque mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without any stringent measures. In fact, yesterday I was telling somebody today that the president's decision on the church is like a proverb. Mm, which proverb is that? It's like a proverb because in reality, <laughs> if you look at the parameters of what he has given, and you're a church. It's better you stay off and tell your people you still do online service. You know why? <laughs> so today, for instance, mm -hmm. I said that yesterday. And today, some churches have issued statements. This morning, there was one church. I saw the statement. The man says, well, the president has opened partially, but we are not going. Because we think that, one, we get it. You are going to have, take the names of all members who come to your church within that service. No service is supposed to go beyond an hour. Yeah. We, you have instruments, you have singers. After almost every time, you have to disinfect things. Yeah. You have to do fumigation. I can tell you that if 100 people even come to the church, the offering that you get is going to sort out this thing. Because you, mean, the cost, the you see, so the point is that if this, so I was a while ago, the, the maker's house, mm -hmm. um, the young yeah, pastor. Yeah. He's, so, so I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gotten the information. They, they've met and they said that, well, we are not going to open. But what because, was the reason? Because, because you see, we don't really even go back. Because, to so the, the reality is that I can <laughs> tell you, in reality, mm -hmm. what the president has done, he had to do it. But I can tell you that he has made it even more difficult for some of the churches if they want to, or they want to operate. I would say it was difficult for law-abiding churches. It was, it was difficult because. for him. The president was in a difficult position, mm. and I even didn't know how he was going to do it. And I can tell you that in this, and the point is that for many enlightened Christians, mm. enlightened Christians, they will even go they to church. They won't go to church. That's the first point. Would you go to church? I will not go. Will you go to church? I will not if go. I'm, 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 no, go I'm to waiting church. to go. I'm that's, waiting that's the point. Because, I'm, 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 I'm waiting to go. I, 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 let me tell you something. On Sunday, on Sunday, I did, uh, normally on Sunday mornings, in the Methodist <laughs> church, in the Methodist church, we have something we call, in the Methodist church, we have something we call Bible class. Yes. You have, you have groupings where you yeah. do Bible class for like an hour before the church service starts. Since this situation, my class every Sunday morning, we do Zoom. And it, I, it's so it's exciting for me. For you. It's, I am not going to risk to go to the church. And I tell people that, okay, 90% of Christianity is what happens outside the church. In the church, what happens is 10% of Christianity. I mean, if for this you, period but can wait, a lot of that's, Christians that's, look forward to going to I church, going saying, to I fellowship. I am fellowship is and, wrong. And then, okay, I reality of it is most people want to physically be in church and then they are fellowship. I understand. You know, so even though us, you know, these middle class, whatever you call yourselves, <laughs> wouldn't want to go to church because you're worried, you're being cautious. There are a lot of 
people who actually their their social life everything activity evolves around church don't, and they are looking for it and they that hundred i'm not sure it okay, will work. no doubt about that that's why i'm saying that the hundred as the president has put it and the 25 percent and all that and the things you still have to do even to have that service watch watch it in the next few days mark my words several churches will issue statements now we appreciate the president but we think that in reality fulfilling all the measures will be very difficult on <laughs> okay. us so people will stay you so with that rest. in mind let's start the mark chat from let's 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 listen and watch <laughs> what the president said on the church um in terms of the lifting of the restrictions we are told not more than 125 percent of the uh, congregation and the number of measures they are supposed to follow through so let's quickly watch what he said listen to what he said and then now we'll look at it uh, one by one of the process of easing restrictions. And a bridge format for religious services can commence. 25% attendance with a maximum number of 100 congregants can worship at a time in church or at the mosque with a mandatory one meter rule of social distancing between congregants. In addition to the mandatory wearing of masks, for all persons at all times in churches and mosques. The register of names and contact details of all worshippers and hand washing facilities and sanitizers must be provided with a maximum duration of one hour for each service. Religious institutions that are desirous of opening their premises to their members, such as churches, mosques and others, must disinfect, fumigate, and put in place the requisite logistics needed to guarantee safe opening and operation. They must work with the des designated regulatory bodies and undertake test runs of the protocols I have outlined. I would appeal to them, in the case of Christians, on the first Sunday of... Okay. So that's the president speaking there on the church matter. So um, uh, quite a number of things. Quickly, uh, an abridged format for religious services, he says, can commence 25% attendance uh, with a maximum number of 100 congregants. They can worship at a time in the church or at the mosque with a mandatory one meter rule of social distancing between them. And um, in addition, they should wear the mask uh, for all people at all times in the churches and the mosques. They have to register the names and contact details of all those who worship. The must be hand washing facilities, sanitizers must be provided. And the maximum duration is one hour. <laughs> is one hour possible? <laughs> My church, we have what we call the contemporary service, Red mm -hmm. Church. We do one hour. There's the other service that go beyond one hour. So, so one I hour, think is one, one hour, hour possible is possible. So, yes, it's very, very well. possible. So we start with the uh, prayer hymn, the preaching, and then. But if there's a communion, it's not possible. Mm. And starting with this, a lot of churches will want to do the communion. Because it's the first Sunday of the month. Yes. So, so there will be communion service. I don't but, know. The, but anyway, that's my. Yes. The, the, I mean, I think that um, yes, the, the president made a very brilliant speech and in fact i'm sure a lot of things he went into no wonder he said it's a product of a lot of stakeholder consultation yeah. and issues so a number of things is placed on the church and religious bodies to do before they they, they start service so 25 percent attendance mm -hmm. with a maximum number of 100, 100. congregants yes. can worship at a time so you can do a number of services in a day mm -hmm. if you not be preaching for long for one hour yeah. you can abridge your messages make it 20 minutes and you can hold three or four services in a day but if you are looking at numbers beyond thousand for some churches yes the you know, sunday can they cover everybody yes with so not, not not everybody like or majority. We, are around, we are three around the table yeah two out of the three have said they will not go to church for the first <laughs> one month at so least. So you know, know, know. <laughs> yes, so I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so I'm saying that not, not everybody choose. will go to church, okay. but we shouldn't also uh, make it difficult for those who want to go to go. That's okay. what the president has done. So, um, so uh, worship at a time in a church or in a mosque with a mandatory one meter rule 
social distancing, etc. In addition, there should be mandatory wearing of masks. I think these measures are enough to guarantee some safety. In any case, people go to the markets. There, there is this social distancing the markets are supposed to be doing. Place where people. They, they put in place certain measures to reduce the spread of the disease. The part which interests me is that religious institutions that are desirous of opening their premises to the numbers, such as churches, mosques, and others, mm -hmm. must disinfect, fumigate, and put in place the requisite logistics needed to guarantee safe opening and operation. It is my humble view that this disinfection and fumigation does not mean fumigating or disinfecting the place after every service or every day. So In fact, the universities and the schools were fumigated, I mean, yeah, Zoom line, so, etc. So it doesn't mean every day when students go home, they have to fumigate before they come to school the following day. Mm. That would be practically impossible. That would be absurd. Yeah. So what he is trying to say is that perhaps before you start the service, let there be some fumigation. You can decide to do it periodically maybe once a month or, one, or twice a month, but it doesn't certainly, the, the text or the reading of the text doesn't tell me that it is to be done after every service. Well, so assuming that my it, church is running three yeah. services or four services, after every service we disinfect the place. That yeah. is not, it will it, 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 it be, it to be observed if yeah. that were the suggestion. Because even if you look at the markets, which um, also house huge numbers, yeah, they which don't were disinfect, yeah, they every disinfected day. long ago, and yeah. every day people go there to yeah. transact business. Yeah. And, and in fact, in that case, it's even every day. Yeah. So the risk is even higher mm -hmm. than in a church where you go there just once a week, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I Unless like to put they out, are looking at the enclosed um, building yes, about, yes. and so, saying that. Yeah, but there are schools, for example, They've been disinfected. I'm not sure universities sit a thousand people. President says that it should be half the class now. Yeah. Sitting 500 people. I'm not sure after every class, before the next class comes, it will be disinfected. It, 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 it's not feasible. Okay. You, you cannot do that. So that's not what okay, the so president was talking about. Okay. In terms of the, the, the one hour, I think mm -hmm. it's a test of the discipline of the churches. Mm -hmm. the churches or religious institutions must be disciplined. This thing about you going to church and I mean, we have some somebody, churches, they start at 9 and yeah, close at 1 yeah, o'clock. So, so, so I'm saying that a lot of churches have a lot of things <laughs> they put in that time. Yeah. Now is a time for discipline because you know that you have to close the church service within one hour. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have worship lasting one hour, you know you have to cut it out maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If you preach for three hours, you know you have to cut it down to maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes. You have to do whatever it takes to close within the time. So you don't face the embarrassment of you being in service and and and, and security men or or, or uh, district assembly people Come around coming to to close your church down. It it it, it to be bad on you because you are a church teaching people how to be disciplined. So it's a test of the church's leadership in that sense. They they have to be disciplined. There are other things. For example, the. Uh, uh, the passing round, the, what was the name? The taking of contacts, etc. Yeah. I don't think it should be a big deal. If you have hundred people coming for a service, get a full scout book, you know, pass it round. Let people write their names. If you think that will be problematic, because passing it round could mean that if somebody is infected and touches the book, it will be passed. Oh, well, they should write it then, before they even. Yeah, but you see, I am the, for I am uh, for passing it round because we want to be able to contact trace properly. So if you're passing it round, like I'm sitting here, Eben is here, and you are there, and and and. I write it, Eben writes after me, and then you write after Eben. In case anything should happen, you know the people sitting around a particular person to start with. Okay, so that's when right. Look, but is it yes. safe to be used, passing yes, but again, the same so, so, so this is my point. Before the people get into the room, you make them wash their hands, you make them apply hand sanitizer, okay. they wear masks, etc. So you, have, you would have taken a huge part of the risk away. You understand? Because their hands you know, would have been cleaner. Yeah. They have their mask on, etc. Okay. They are seated one meter apart, everything. So I think the risk has would have been reduced drastically. Let's not <laughs> put fear in people. <laughs> and let's not stop people from going to the house of the Lord to, to pray and worship. And, and, and you know, you see, for, for a lot of people, mm. the, the, the church is all they have. Yeah. The yeah. fellowship, yeah. which is scriptural, the fellowship is, is what they have. People wake up every morning not even sure what to do next. Mm -hmm. They need their faith levels yeah. to, be, to be raised. That's true. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you. You can listen to other people <laughs> and get faith, but it is, it is a different experience going to the church 
sitting under your pastor or somebody and being ministered to. Mm. It, it's, a, it's a whole lot of things. Going to church itself is therapeutic. Yeah. Look at how we, our system is. That's Without true. the church or religious bodies, our depression levels mm. would have shot. Most people levels. actually in Ghana, their lives are built around the church. Most and it's a good people. thing, actually. Yeah, most people. But even that doesn't agree. Amen. <laughs> you know, the, the thing Salom is saying, eh, it's a bit more easy with structured churches. But I can tell you, I don't know what data government is working with. Mm. I wish government could even give us a data, or we have a data of the number of churches in Ghana. Yeah. And I can tell you that most of the churches, probably the, the, the majority, are not as structured as Salom is putting it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these things we are talking about, these structures, they cannot... They cannot be enforced. Mm. Maybe I am waiting on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, for the government to come and give us a breakdown because they need to give us a breakdown. Of Actually, how tonight, tonight they will yeah, talk they about tonight. the religious, okay. you so, know, so that we get seven. we get the details of enforcement because mm -hmm. this country, I have always said, that we are wonderful with ideas. When it comes to implementation, it's always almost zero, and so. Yes, you put these things on paper, you expect the churches that they are going to really observe or the mosque that they are going to observe. But the point is that if you don't monitor, if you don't put in place certain structures to enforce, there will be a challenge. But my point is still my, the point I'm making. As I said, the Dr. Pastor Michael Buedi Nyameche of the Makers House International said, the point is that there are concerns about health issues. Yeah. There are concerns about operational cost mm -hmm. of implementing this. Mm -hmm. And then he has concerns about congregational size. Yeah. So he says for now his church is still going to do the online service. He has about 5,000 members mm -hmm. and he's going to do the online service. And I think that that is a good decision. Because you see, we are making it look like this is forever. The church will always be there. We will go back to church. This disease, it will not be here so forever. You, you feel so that my we point is that in as much as no, church no, or what? I don't, I don't begrudge the president to. I, I am actually in support of the president's decision. Because don't forget that, like Salam said, the church constitutes almost 70%. They are mm -hmm. influential in how things are done. Mm. There are churches that run organizations like schools. And they pay people, they, yeah. they support mm -hmm. a lot of things beyond just the church. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a, it's an important economy. The church economy is equally important. And so the president had to take, he had to buy this bullet. It's a very difficult one. But don't forget that the church leaders have been engaging him. They've been meeting him. They are interested that he should do something about it. And I can tell you that the president and his team may have really thought deep about this. Because for me, how they have done it, he has given the churches a puzzle. And that's why I was telling you that. I say, we go and move. In Tiseo Tsebenasia, you tell yourself that, no, this one there. The way the president, they do that, they be like, you know what make we go. I mean, that's, that's for me, that's, 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 my, that's my interpretation of it. And that's why I was saying, the, let me read the, just a brief um, statement from one of the churches. This okay. church is called Destiny Empowerment Chapel International. Okay. It says, suspension of church gathering. We have only one life to live. <laughs> life is more precious and priceless than gold. Don't hurry your life into debt. Mm -hmm. Don't rush into distraction, into self-distraction. Mm -hmm. Let's take our time and allow things to cool down before we engage ourselves with any social gatherings. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are dealing with varied people with different backgrounds. Hence, you can never tell where someone is coming from, nor what someone picked on their way to you. Yeah. The precaution must be taken. We have so many years ahead of us. Church will always be there for us to worship as Christians. What matters is we need life to serve our God. Let's not downplay wisdom with spirituality. We have our future and that of our children to protect. Let's not die prematurely as a result of ignorance. On that note, as the founder of Destiny Empowerment Chapel International, I state categorically that all our church services remain virtual until further notice. God bless you. I trust the Lord at the right time. We shall gather again. Protect yourself in the Lord. Dr. Bernard, Dr. Bernard Taylor, Senior Pastor of the Destiny Empowerment Chapel International. So I, really, I, think that that, I think, and I'm telling you, watch this. In the next few days, a lot of churches will come out with these circles. Watch, you watch it. Mm. Because, the, and you see, we behave as if, I was telling somebody that, are we saying that the God that we serve, that we claim is so powerful, he didn't know there would be a period like this? Mm -hmm. God knows the end from the beginning. He has always known everything. And this period is part of a period that we will cross. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that 
we I know that there's a thin line between faith and common sense. Yeah. It's very difficult sometimes and it's complex. <laughs> but if you are not careful, you can be stupid and before you know, you harm yourself. Okay. We've heard of pastors in the UK who were bragging in the US. A pastor who was bragging, yeah. go, and yeah. we know and he, he got, got corona and, and he died. Yeah, that's and in true. that kind of death, it is stupidity. It's, 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 it's not faith. It's and so I think faith. that it's a complex situation. But I think people need to be cautious. And let's also not forget, we call him omnipresent God. He is everywhere. And for this moment, he lives. The point is that we always say that the church is a physical structure. Mm -hmm. The temple is you as a person. And I have said, and I'll repeat, 90% of what a Christian's life is, is not what happens in the church. The that, church is for fellowship true. for a moment. That's that is true. Good. And some people you know, so need the need fellowship to. in of this course, time because it. of the depression, the stress, everything that comes. They want the physical, you know, and then they have the right to fellowship as and how they want, which, which is fine. I think you've made your point. I am looking at how um, everything will go in terms of even, you know, our churches, uh, a lot of people like to dance, move around, you know, sing and shout and all. Of course, we wear the masks, mm -hmm. but that activity which comes to the sweating and all that, what, what would it look like and all that? But let me take some uh, questions people want us to look at. This is from Abdullah Tabora Laji. He says, I'm a Muslim and um, our worship is such that as and when it is time for prayers, I can walk to the nearest mosque to pray, irrespective of my location. Now, how am I supposed to determine the number of people in the mosques before I enter? So these are, it's like when a law is enacted, we have another subsidiary legislation called the LI to help in the operationalization of the law because the law itself often has, it, it's, it's broad. No. So the president has given broad guidelines and he has told us that today, the Minister for Religious Affairs, uh, my hometown man, uh, mm -hmm. Kofi Jamesi, will we'll come this evening to us, yeah. and, and, and give us the, the details. I hope that a lot of these things he'll be telling us, or these questions being asked, will be answered. But again, if churches have, effective churches have cells, mm -hmm. so there should be a way around it. You know, one size will not fit everybody. If my church has a number, has a membership of, let's say, 300 or 400, it's easier to reach out to them, to tell them, okay, maybe people, maybe these kinds of people, you can come to church first service. Hmm. This group can come second service. This group can come third service. You know, it, it, it one size will not fit if everybody. You have a, a you, you, congregation you, of five thousand. You, know you, you can get like let's say five services. Mm -hmm. Are you going to send a message and say today I'll come at the one o'clock? Uh, no. What, 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 what I'm saying is that the churches have their own internal structures. Yeah. I will not sit here and say what should happen in a ten thousand seater, you know, capacity uh, church. church or a hundred you know, capacity church or whatever. The, their systems should allow them to do what is right. Okay. What is important is that the ground rules have been set. Okay. Don't go beyond 100 or 25% of your membership. And that must happen. However that will be done, it, it could be on first come, first set basis. If you come early, you, you, you sit, you finish your service, you go. It's just one hour. So if you okay, come late, you can sit some more wait and do the next okay. one. So, so the, the, the modalities that churches will really <laughs> have to come out with. And I'm sure by now, the serious churches would, I'm sure a lot of them would have anticipated this before. Yeah. And by now, a lot of them should be forming small groups or committees to be thinking through the how of meeting this particular uh, order or directive. I, yeah. I don't see yeah. it, it, to be a, a, it, it to be a bit difficult, but I, I don't see it as being so difficult. Okay. They should be able to scale it. You want to react in, in to any case, <laughs> I mean, there, there are churches okay. with cells. Mm -hmm. You can even expand those cell meetings, those, these cell groups. Big churches have various auditoriums, like ICGC, for example. Huge auditoriums, apart from the main room. Yeah. The, um, first floor, second floor, third floor. Okay. Huge. You can use those places as churches. What matters is that you have different people preaching to them at different times. Lighthouse, for example, they have various rooms. So the big, big churches should have a way of dealing with this. They have many, many rooms that can be used to do this. Once the social distancing protocol is adhered to, if the room cannot sit 100 people when they are spaced out, they could sit 50. That is a service. Get somebody to lead worship and praise and get somebody to preach to them, let them fellowship, let them go home. It doesn't mean the whole ICGC, for example, the whole place okay. should have 100 people at a time. No. If there are various rooms they can use, and, and have different services that should happen okay all right i mean again, it will be interesting to see how some will be able to implement it i mean if some are able to do it and do it well 
But also don't forget that the fact that the president included the option of taking down names is a preparation of the president and the government's mind that even what we want to do, it will bring it can bring us cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. do, do you get it? So the president Definitely. has actually taken a risk, whichever way you see Definitely. it. Definitely. That's why they told that write down your names because if it happens that later we find out cases, then we can do contact to tracing you, yeah. because it becomes easier. Yeah. So whatever we are taking, the decision we are taking is a risk, but okay. still at this point. Let me read for you. It says, thank you for your analysis. But as usual, my bishop spoke to us on our platform that we are not gathering at the auditorium, but online service will continue till everything is calm. The name of my church is Christ Oil Fields Authority Church. My bishop's name is Bishop King David Abazeri. <laughs> so uh, you, you just watch this week. So they will, there will be more well, of this okay. announcement. I have told you. You just watch. Okay, this is uh, Otua from Abeka. He says, so who monitors to make sure that the rules work? <laughs> who thing. and how will they verify that the churches comply with all these things? Already, the majority don't comply with these protocols and nothing happens. So how do we rely on the observance and uh, some of these protocols? COVID-19 is so dangerous to play with. Please let's not deceive ourselves. We are on a dangerous path. Mimi says, what about the children's services in church and Makaranta? Won't there be an infection? It does not make sense to close schools and yet expose the children in religious gathering. We all know that many communities don't wear the mask. This one from BB North K says, Rwanda implemented lockdown for six weeks and was able to contain and, uh, the spread and had no death. They eased restrictions and cases started to rise to a little over 300 and after just one death, they tightened the restrictions again. Yeah. But we are here saying that uh, 8,070 cases with 36 deaths is comfortable. So we lift restrictions. We are joking. Okay, so um, this one says, um, uh, yes, uh, okay. This one says, just look at the wonderful city program, Intercede Ghana. City is not a church, but see the positive impact they had on many lives. A church can reach their members without them coming into the building. Anyone who doesn't want to adopt to change will die. Technology is the way to go. This one says, Prince from Kofreda says, misplaced priorities. Are we the only country with WASI and BC candidates? Until all the students and teachers are mass tested, I will advise them not to go because they will be risking their lives should they try. If NIA and EC can work, why can't we play football if the decision is not political? For me, I'm not going to church because God is going nowhere. Hmm. This one says, um, hmm. Vivian, the president's steps to contain the virus and avoid spread is laudable. But my concern, my problem is with our security agencies. Are they going to monitor churches to make sure they don't exceed the number and duration announced by the mm. president? Same as other restricted gatherings like funerals, schools, weddings, and the others. We need to be careful because we know when most Ghanaians are given inches, they move to yards. This is from Samuel from Apam. This one says, one hour church service. Pentecost closing announcement. Oh, guys. <laughs> no, that's a reality. Don't do you that. Read, you should read it. It's three hours, 30 minutes. Yeah, they're not, no, not three hours. But the announcement alone is somebody's full service time. No, it's, it's, a it's, a test, it's, it's a test of leadership. It's a test of promptness and punctuality. And, okay. and, and it will help so, the church let me read after all this. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is from Randy from Kumasi says, Schools reopening for finals to, for year students is very cold on the ice, where it seems um, to be a gamble in our churches and mosques. I don't believe they will be able to adhere strictly to the measures. Uh, this social distancing won't be practic practicable before and after service, but it will only take place in the church. Hmm. Okay, Ebenezer is my man this afternoon. Keep serving us with wisdom. What is the therapeutic? What is therapeutic about the church service? <laughs> <laughs> this is you. And beaches to shoot. Oh, they're all therapeutic. <laughs> and then this one says, hello to you guys. Uh, this 100 people at a time per service won't work with uh, won't work with me. What happens during deliverance service? I think the 
this is a premature decision for political reasons. So he's saying that when they start the deliverance, <laughs> can you stop in the middle? And so one hour is up. Hey, hey, you. <laughs> anyway, so you can, let's react to some of the issues you are raising. Well, uh, we'll go for no, it. I mean, just so I'm a bit clearer. <laughs> All online services should still go on. Even before yes. COVID, yes. there were online services. ICGC, even my church, uh, Lighthouse. Uh, yeah. A lot of churches did online services so that they're able to reach to a wider audience or, or membership or, or okay. supporters or people outside who are not in the church. That's important. It carries the message further. But what I'm saying is that the directive by the president is taking out a particular or taking off a particular lid or restriction mm -hmm. that prevented people who wanted to go to the church <coughs> from going to the church. So there'll be church service. If you want to go, yes, you can go. Just make sure you stay within the rules. Online services will continue. Before, we were not to go to church. But now that restriction has been lifted. But other qualifying restrictions have been brought. So you can go to church. Just make sure you do what you have to do. Don't exceed the numbers. But in a church which says that because churches have been open means I won't do uh, uh, online service, it's not serious. In fact, the, the digital church concept has come to stay. What are covid today ends today or not mm -hmm. the digital church concept has come to stay churches will continue to invest in technology and that is the way to go that is the future but i'm saying that it is refreshing for me that if i want to go to church can. i can go to church have my fellowship and then come back home and feel safe and satisfied Be last week i couldn't go because there were restrictions that restriction has been lifted that's my whole point and i'm saying that you know you, you, you can still stay at home and do your online service if, if, if you don't feel safe enough. We differ in levels of faith and we differ in many, in, in, in many things. So yes, it's, it's a good uh, thing the president has done by lifting this, but I'll not be surprised if a lot more people stay home because they feel they are not safe or they, they, they don't feel safe enough to go. I, I won't be grudging okay. at all. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think I generally, most of the, the, mess, the comments you read, people think around the lines that we are also thinking about. And I think that um, I have said that we is, is a matter of faith and common sense and wisdom and spirituality. It depends on how you want to weigh it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these things are very individualistic. And so like Salam said, if it's open. If you want to go and join the 100 or the 50, you can join. If you want to do your service from home, you can still do from home. But I still think that <laughs> a lot of churches would definitely take some decision that would just say that, you know what, the president has tried, but we think that this is difficult logistically in terms of congregational size and, and all that we need to do to enforce things. And for your health, we think that we can't protect you 100%. So let's stay home and still do the virtual service. Okay. I, I, I think a lot of that is going to happen. Okay. Joseph from Kaswa says, I'm not comfortable with the lifting of the lockdown. Okay. Yeah. Nana. Uh, she says, she's a doctor, she says, good day, City TV, we the health workers are only praying that we don't get an overwhelming surge. I mm. think the elderly and vulnerable groups should still stay at home and the younger folk move out when necessary. One hour services can be done, though, just requires discipline, but every action requires discipline in these times. Mansa from Nongwa says, does the 100 include both adults and children? My church has over 500 kids at the secondary school. Um, this one says the easing of the restrictions are based on okay uh, okay then this one says for me I can't think far has uh, God speaks to uh, okay this one I don't think we should so, so uh, I, I mean people are raising quite a number of uh, issues the health workers believe we should hang on because uh, you know it can lead to a surge or a spike in the numbers um, some are still looking at the modalities involved in um, ensuring that we go around um, these um, restrictions that have been lifted and all that. Tonight, um, the Chieftain C Minister is expected to um, give us the modalities around some of the questions that are, are being raised. But um, in terms of implementation and the authorities, are we sure we, we can see these issues implemented? Uh, uh, I mean, you see, the church is one of those bodies or institutions that do not have a regulatory body. So if it were like 
radio stations, TV stations, telcos, for example, you know there's NCA out there with a the whip. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the, the right thing, you'll be whipped. If, if maybe journalists or practice of media, etc. I know the NMC is sitting Can't somewhere. You know, that, that kind of thing. The church doesn't have that. So it's, and fortunately, the church is a place for conscience. It's, it's a place where a lot of conscience and morality and that kind of thing, you know, rules. So, you know, they have to self-regulate. The church or the, the state will be forced to come in if they fail to do that. And I'm in support of the state coming in if the churches fail to adhere to the structures. We don't have enough police officers or district assembly people across the country to be going from church to church, considering the number of churches we have in this country. But they can, they can do random sampling. They can visit churches randomly. All they need to do is to make example of a few. Mm -hmm. If you make example of a few, I'm not sure any church, when, when this, the lockdown itself yeah, started, yeah. we had churches doing that weddings still, and service. Yeah. Three or four of them were arrested, mm -hmm. dealt with. And it the, the that is what it is. Yeah. The enforcement of it is key, unless, of course, we are not ready to enforce. But given how we have eased it, enforcement should be key. What the president has done is to take a lot of the power from himself in this case and giving it, it to us. What it also means is that the, 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 the tool of enforcement must work well so that churches that flout it are made examples of. I think that's how we can deal with this. Okay. Maybe you have a few seconds. Yeah, so I think up. like the president said, greater freedom comes with greater responsibility. So, I mean, it may not be the best of freedoms you are looking for, but at least uh, they've been given some amount of freedom to have that uh, worship and movement around. I'm also happy about the, the opportunity for restaurants to have the seated uh, services, which is quite good because it's also affected a lot of restaurants and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hotels can do conferences and all that. So yeah. um, there, there, there's some good readings in all that the president did because I have said that this thing is a novel, it's a novelty for everybody. And there's no tried and tested template for every, any leader to follow. So it's a difficult time for every president. And so sometimes, of course, we have to bear with the president in some of these things. But I think that the, the, the first phase of what we have tried to do is a good thing. We are only hoping, but we can judge from implementation when that happens. Otherwise, for now, we can only hope that. We can only say that it looks good on the surface. Well, let's wait for implementation and see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, and indeed, the, the president yeah. himself has said that, yes, there exists the possibility of a potential surge in infections. Mm -hmm. As a precautionary measure, we have strengthened further our existing national, regional, and district response team. And he says that we will continue to learn, review, and adjust where and when we need to do so. We will only proceed with this target opening up of our country when it is safe to do so. So it, it doesn't mean that it's a done deal, you know, so you can go about doing what you, yeah. you want to do. If per the data and science, it turns out that it's, it's not proper to even do it this way, I'm sure the president will claw back some of those freedoms he has given us. Yes. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we're not able to um, delve into details. The school part, the mm -hmm. EC, the NIE, and of course, uh, the, 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 the opposition party reacting to it a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. But um, the conversation still continues. We'll delve into those other issues um, on Eyewitness later today on radio at 5.30. Uh, on um, City Newsroom at 8 o'clock on TV, tomorrow on The Breakfast Show, both radio and TV, and then back tomorrow again um, for more discussion on this. But thank you so much for joining us. I had uh, Beneza Fenyi Dadzi, uh, head of City Business News Dex, here at City TV and City FM. Also, I had Selam Adonui's head of features and articles here at City TV and City FM. And my name is Vivian Kailoko. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>